Hello again, I hope you are ready because there is a huge dose of knowledge waiting for you over here. So, as you probably spotted, we always used repeat one. Of course, I'm happy to explain what does it mean and how we can use that in our animations. So, the repeat feature means how many times our animation will be repeated. We always used uh, repeat one, which means that our animation will be repeated only one time and we can use the value as high as we can. For this example, repeat two, then our animation will make two repeats in the same number of frames, which is uh, 120. And that's why we are seeing our animation uh, way faster than it used to be before. So if we would like to speed it up, then we can use less number of frames and make the repeat feature bigger or we can of course decrease the number of frames with the same repeat status. All right, what else? We have reverse toggle. That's very helpful if you have to create a very complex animation, but in the best effect will be achieved when the animation will be reversed. What does it mean? Uh, just imagine if you have very complex and hard animation to draw, uh, something um, making the bigger and bigger, but making the animation from the small point to the uh, bigger, for example, cir circle, may be hard. So with this button, you can start from, from the end. So make the animation big and then animate it to the small point. And you will see that reversed, completely reversed. Of course, this example above is super easy and uh, can be achieved in both ways, but I wanted to show how it works. Anyway, next feature is shake. I think that it's also pretty obvious, but after clicking the shake, we will see two new parameters, which is the intensity of shaking at the end of the animation and at the beginning. So let's uh, set the end of the animation shaking lower than bigger at the beginning and we can observe that when our animation goes to the end then the shaking is way less chaotic that's how shaking works and i really recommend to keep that in mind because we can have a lot of nice places in the song and the music especially cinematic music when that effect can be applied so uh, just check it out how it looks like uh, don't forget that you can put values by clicking on the uh, on the sliders and provide it manually so check it out how example settings can look like on the preview and live view and from the projector. Well, we have one more button to discuss right now. And this one will be very helpful if we would like to reset displacement of the animation without deleting the object. So, for example, we have the line in editor window. This line makes some animation and we don't like the animation and would like to um, animate it one more time. So here is the button to reset displacement of that animation and we can then start with animating the object one more time. Yes, what if we would like to make more complex animations with a few movements in different directions, then we have to use scope. Yes, that's the little timeline below the editor window. And we see that we have selected all uh, frames at the moment. We can start with the first one. Here is our indicator which frame is already selected. Then we can set end frame, which is 60 in our example. That's in the middle of the, on the, of the scope of the animation. So all things we will do right now will be made between first and 16th animation. As you can see, the second part of the animation is totally blank because our scope was set only to the half of the scope. 
Now, if we would like to draw something in second part, then we have to change scope from 61st frame till the end. That's how you can select the scope. In case if you'd like to draw the animation or any other object only in the part of your full animation. In our case we use two halves of the animation, first and the second, and uh, that's how our animation looks like now. You saw the preview in the window and live preview from my laser cube, and now you see both. All right, and one more thing which is pretty useful and important here is how to use quick shortcuts. While moving the mouse on the timeline, this little timeline, you can click on the one on the keyboard to select where your scope should start and then click on two to select where the scope should end. Also, the second shortcut is holding the left shift, click and hold left mouse and select the area on the timeline. Also, by holding the left shift and clicking on the timeline, you will reset the scope and select all frames at one click. One important thing regarding the scope and selecting and deleting the animations is that you have to remember on what the scope of frames you left some content, some object, because if you would like to delete all things, just go to the frames where something has left, select that and delete one more time. Next thing is onion skinning. You already know that feature a bit from the lessons about the timeline mode and as I promised I will talk about it a bit more now. So let's say that you would like to draw very precise animation starting from 30 frame. So we have to select current frame only in the animation box then draw an object and select onion button. Then by moving on the timeline or by clicking the right left button you can jump to the next or previous frame and if you go to the next frame you will see the superimposed frame on the editor window. Then it's easy to guess where you should draw next object, next frame because you already know and see where the last one was drawn. Of course the animation I'm drawing right now is super easy and it's like nothing complex but believe me if you'd like to make uh, some real movement or maybe some graphic animation this feature is very helpful and I'm sure I will try to show you how to use that feature a bit more while we go to creating a full laser show course. Let's speed it up a bit, that's uh, how it should look like at the end. Go to the first frame of the, this one animation and see how it looks like on the preview. Of course it's crazy and uh, means totally nothing, but the main goal was to show uh, each step uh, how it's uh, how it goes from the from the very beginning of our animation and we draw our first animation step by step frame by frame just remember drawing animation step by step requires you to deleting that animation step by step too select all and delete all won't work like this because each frame behaves as unique so the easiest way is to click file and new Last modes and buttons in editor mode to know. The edit. You will see that box only if some object in editor mode has been selected. What next? Reapply blanking and reapply colors. We will need those a bit later when we start the real experiments with animations and creating various really special and interesting shapes, color, transitions and more. But now let's focus on path button. It's nothing else like just drawing a path of the animation. The path that your object will follow accordingly to all animation settings like animation curve, number of repeats or scope. 
Now you can see that barely visible path on our grid, uh, which is also important because if we left the grid view, square grid view, then uh, our path will stick to that grid. So as I said about the settings, here we set the triangle wave which means our animation will go back and forth and that's what is happening one repeat 120 frames and that's how it looks like of course if we change the view to the clear one without any grid then we can draw everything like every shape and our animation or our object will go like a crazy And of course, we can still apply every setting mentioned before, like uh, reset displacement of the animation or change the curve of the animation. Just the only thing we have to do is select the curve and draw the animation. This one, we can clearly see how our circle is moving right now, which is, it's good to remember what impact the curve has on the animation. Well, it's all for this episode. I hope you are not sleeping. It was a bit exhausting, I know, but hey, you spent maybe three hours so far to learn things that took me probably a year or so to figure out. In next lessons, I will show you how to play with all those sliders, buttons, features and modes. It's starting to be exciting.